हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू शिक्षा सावी टूडेज लेक्चर विल बी ऑन प्लेटो बाई डॉक्टर आलोक कुमार गुप्ता हेलो व्यूअर्स गुड इवनिंग टूडे दिस इज गोइंग टू बी माई सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन प्लेटो एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट वर्कस ऑफ प्लेटो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई डिस्कस्ड अबाउट प्लेटोज लाइफ and uh, <clears throat> plato's uh, political thinking today i am going to discuss about the works of plato so <clears throat> what are philosophical works of plato the so called seventh letter which is ascribed to plato presents him as disillusioned by athenian politics and as intervening in an idealistic but there is no reason to think any of the letters genuine is still less to use them to interpret the political theory of the dialogues now what i mean to say by this slide is that uh, <coughs> plato wrote supposedly wrote 13 letters but uh, most of these letters are lost to the posterity and uh, the most important one which is available to us is known as the seventh letter and uh, this letter entails that how disillusion plato was about athenian politics and it was his disillusionment with the athenian politics that made him to become a philosopher rather than participating in politics he chose to write on politics so <coughs> uh this is an idealistic uh way of thinking of plato and uh, many later scholars later commentators on plato have uh, largely accepted that these letters are not genuine letters however these letters are uh, used um, uh, for referring here and there sometimes you will also come across uh, by the name or the title the epistles epistles of plato uh, are considered to be a series of 13 letters as i was telling you which traditionally uh, <clears throat> you know becomes the uh, the entire gamut of platonic uh, creations or platonic corpus excluding the seventh letter as it is visible from this slide rest are considered to be for you know forced ones or may not have existed although uh, many scholars reject this seventh letter also so they were generally accepted as genuine until you know the modern era began and later most thinkers regarded that none of the letters were written by plato so the epistles focused mostly on plato's time uh, which he spent in syracuse when he went there on the invitation of dionysius to train his uh, nephew dion and his influence on the political figures dion and dionysius so they are mostly or generally biographical rather than philosophical so this is about uh, the philosophical works of plato then <coughs> plato's works include largely apology of socrates this is very important because this is uh, one dialogue which has been translated into gujarati by mahatma gandhi and uh, the title of that translation is satyavir ki katha this uh, apology details about the trial of socrates then there are mentions of 23 genuine and 11 disputed dialogues so some of these 23 dialogues i am going to uh, discuss later on then the 13 letters which i just now referred as the epistles uh, i have already told you about it that whether uh, they are genuine or you know how different scholars think about it the dates of plato most of works are disputed and uh, many scholars have uh, categorized the these works belonging to different era which means the same work may be may have been described by one scholar or one commentator belonging to one era by another commentator belonging to another era so this dispute is there because uh, the text itself is uh, quite old now <coughs> Uh, i mean it it goes back to 2500 years then major dialogues include apology crito anthipro 
लैचिस लाइसिस चार्मिडस प्रोटागोरस मेनो जॉर्जियास यूथेडेमस कार्टाइलस लेसर हिपियस ग्रेटर हिपियस एन मैनेक्सिमैनेक्जिनस फेदो सिम्पोजियम फेद्रस देन स्टेट्समैन लॉस टाइमियस फिलेबस रिपब्लिक नाउ आउट आउट ऑफ ऑल दिस ट्वेंटी थ्री डायलॉग्स विच आई मैंसन ओवर हेयर इन लास्ट टू स्लाइड्स थ्री आर वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट द रिपब्लिक द लॉज एंड द स्टेट्स मैन लॉज इज कंसिडर टू बी हिज लास्ट डायलॉग दो हेयर इन दिस स्लाइड इट इज डिफरेंटली ऑर्डर इट इज नॉट ऑर्डर अकॉर्डिंग टू the time period in 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 which it was written but just for your knowledge laws is considered to be the last dialogue of plato and <clears throat> the most important one is considered to be republic so republic laws and statesman to together these three dialogues are very important for students of political science another information that you should uh, remember is that the greek name of statesman is politicus Uh, the Greek name of all other dialogues. Some of the Greek names are already mentioned there. Some of the, the names are the translated ones. Now, <clears throat> political philosophy of Plato, of Athens, as opposed to that of Socrates of the early Platonic dialogues, begins with Republic. So, what it means to say is that uh, Plato of Athens, who wrote Republic, and Republic is about the dialogue that took place between socrates on the one hand and rest of the participants on the other hand that we will be subsequently discussing in uh, maybe other uh, slides or maybe uh, other <coughs> lecture but what is important over here is that political philosophy of plato begins with the dialogues of republic and how that we will learn slowly and gradually <coughs> then apology that i was referring about apology it is apology of socrates it is an imaginative and satirical version of socrates defense trial and all of you know should know that uh, socrates was uh, <coughs> accused by the rule of 30 tyrants or the group of 30 tyrants who were ruling over Athens and he was uh, convicted of piety and uh, corrupting the mind of youths and he was imprisoned so after his imprisonment the defense trial that took place that is that has been immortalized by way of dialogue in apology and as i told you that mahatma gandhi has translated this tract into gujarati उन्होंने सत्यवीर की कथा नौ दिस वॉज ऑलरेडी ए क्वेश्चन समवेयर इन आई थिंक नाइनटीन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व द बेसिक प्रिमाइस ऑफ अपोलॉजी इज दैट सॉक्रेटस हैड ए डिवाइन मिशन टू फिलोसफाइज एंड एलिवेट हिज सोल एंड एनकरेज अदर्स टू डू द सेम सो वट आई मीन द बेसिक प्रिमाइस ऑफ दिस डायलॉग इज दैट सॉक्रेटस Uh, lived with a, uh, with with certain divine mission, and the divine mission was to philosophize and elevate his soul, and encourage others also. Those who used to talk to him, converse with him, those who were th by the side of him, that they also should live a good life, which means life of a pious soul. So basically, it is about uh, the philosophy how to elevate one's soul. and uh, uh, at the core of it is that why and why one should be a law abiding citizen and how one could be a law abiding citizen so <clears throat> that is the core of core discussion of this uh, uh, dialogue apology <coughs> so uh, it is a socratic dialogue of the speech of legal self defense with socrates This is Socrates' time period, 469 to 399 BC, which is which was asserted at the time of his trial. Which means whatever was asserted at the time of Socrates' trial, that has been enumerated or immortalized into the dialogue called Apology. 
and uh, as i told you that he was tried for he was put on trial with charges known as impiety and corruption corruption here means corrupting the mind of the youth was the real charge impiety means he did not believe in uh, the gods and goddesses of th- those days he used to be critical of them so this was another charge and main charge raised was raised as corrupting the youth and not believing the gods in whom the city believes so this is what i was trying to explain just now <coughs> so apology is the primary source about the trial and death of the philosopher socrates and uh, this uh, dialogue which depicts the trial is one of the four sacred socratic dialogue along with euthyphro phaedo crito and the fourth one is itself the apology through which plato has provided the details of the final days of the philosopher socrates which means when socrates was captivated put behind bars and uh, how the trial proceeded that is there in the uh, apology then another one crito is very important in which uh, his wealthy friend crito arranged for his escape from the prison he bribed all the prison staff and went up to socrates and entered into a conversation with him that socrates this is high time you should leave the prison i have made all arrangements but then <coughs> socrates refused and uh, while ref- when he refused uh, a conversation ensued between them whereby Socrates has tried to impress upon Crito that throughout his life he has been preaching or teaching to the people of Athens that why they should be law abiding so how he himself can breach the law so this uh, <coughs> this dialogue or this, uh, this this is the theme of the dialogue that took place in Crito <coughs> Phaedo is about why one should obey the state whether it is our political obligation social obligation or moral obligation these are all small small dialogues so one who has interest a larger interest into it they may go through it so krito i just now uh, explained it to you that uh, this is a conversation between socrates and his wealthy friend krito uh, of alopes and this is regarding justice injustice and the appropriate response to injustice after after socrates in imprisonment where crito is arguing that you are meted out with injustice and socrates is arguing that even at the cost of my life i will continue to be a law abiding citizen and that's what the justice means so the question and extent of political obligation and disobedience has been discussed in this dialogue called crito then another one that uh, out of three four dialogues is uh, euthyphro and in this dialogue uh, the events that occur in the weeks before the trial of socrates between socrates and euthyphro euthyphro is of prosperta is an athenian religious prophet a mantic seer with particular interest in father gods such as uranus cronus and geos the dialogue covers subjects such as the meaning of piety and justice so basically this dialogue revolves around refuting or justifying the charges which was leveled on him by the those 30 tyrants that uh, just now we read that impiety means uh, not believing the believing in the gods that the city believes in so uh, this has been discussed in e- this dialogue called euthyphro the dialogue covers subjects such as the meaning of piety and justice and this entails the service to the divine holiness and was noble a- was a noble activity which would elevate the soul it ends in aporia aporia in philosophy is a conundrum or a state of puzzlement in rhetoric it is a declaration of doubt made for rhetorical purposes and often feign which means it does not lead to any concrete answer it uh, leaves the reader in a puzzle as to whether he whatever he preached amounts to 
नॉन एक्सेप्टेंस नॉन बिलीफ और नॉट हैविंग फेथ और ट्रस्ट इन द गॉड इन गॉड और गॉडेसेस इन विच द सिटी हैड सो मच ऑफ इट देन लैचेस इज अनदर डायलॉग सो द फोर डायलॉग्स विच preceded as well as uh, took place during the imprisonment and trial of socrates euthipro crito phaedo and uh, apology we have already discussed so those four dialogues you should uh, remember that it relates to socrates imprisonment and trial and final execution then comes laches it explored the meaning and definition of courage now here let me point out that in those days greek world there used to be talk about four cardinal virtues wisdom courage temperance and justice which we will be discussing subsequently so this dialogue uh, details about the meaning and definition of courage uh, participants in the discourse present competing definitions of the concept of courage and main participants are socrates nicias Laches, Laches is an Athenian aristocrat and general during the Peloponnesian War, and Nicias, an Athenian politician and a general during the period of Peloponnesian War. So these are the figures who are the participant in the dialogue called Laches. Then Charmides is another dialogue which is uh, about the uncle of Plato because Charmides was an uncle of Plato. and he is also listed as one of those 30 tyrants which uh, acquired or which usurped power in athens after the defeat of athens in peloponnesian war at the hands of sparta and this dialogue explains the idea of self knowledge or the socratic dictum of know thyself which in today's parlance would mean know yourself and consider temperance or self control as the key to maintaining one's equilibrium uh, something upon which you can say later on our own mahatma gandhi has uh, built his philosophy of enlightened uh, anarchism uh, where he talks about ruling over the self so this dialogue relates to that i mean that is the theme of this dialogue then protagoras uh, this <clears throat> the main argument is between socrates and the elderly protagoras protagoras is a celebrated sophist and a philosopher and uh, this dialogue contain the views of the sophist protagoras containing them with those of socrates a theme continued in lesser hippias and greater hippias so whatever discussion that has took place in this dialogue has further continued in other two dialogues known as lesser hippias and greater hippias Uh, which i have already enumerated in that table that i shown you uh, in the beginning somewhere in the beginning then as i told you in the beginning the three most important dialogues which plato has left behind uh, and uh, these works are mentioned as in earlier 360 bc <coughs> three are perennial interest to all those who may be interested in the history of political ideas republic which was written somewhere between 380 to 370 bc uh, most commentators they regard it to be uh, of 375 bc then statesman the other name of the or the greek name of it was the politicus and uh, this was published in or written in 360 bc the laws written in 350 bc so these three dialogues uh, i will be discussing one by one brief account uh, now republic as i told you that um, most of the books mentions about uh, this book this dialogue belonging to around 375 bc plato saw in the academy which was established in 387 bc a training school for future philosophic rulers and republic was composed during this time when the academies began and uh, people started uh, acquiring knowledge in republic sorry in academy republic was written at that time 
a commentator called Foster. <coughs> he has written that the book Republic served as its prospectus. Means book Republic was the prospectus of Plato's school called Academy. And this has been asserted by Foster. So this information you should keep in mind. Maybe there could be a question that who said the book Republic served as its at the prospectus of Academy. The answer should be Foster. Taylor says the founding of the Academy is a turning point in Plato's life and in some ways the most memorable event in the history of European science. It was the culmination of his efforts. It was a permanent institution for the pursuit of science by original research. <clears throat> so see in what a great high esteem the school of Plato that is Academy is has been described or has been taken by Taylor and many other scholars they have the same kind of feeling about Academy. And Republic is an amalgam of Plato's ideas in the field of ethics, metaphysics, philosophy and politics. So Republic is one dialogue which uh, you know you can say is inclusive of most of the branches of philosophy and here in this slide I have identified only few that is ethics, metaphysics, philosophy and politics. It also contains logic, it also contains uh, values. So uh, it, it sounds as if Republic is on in, in, all inclusive and different philosophers and commentators have given very high sounding comments about Republic. Maybe here and there we will be discussing as we proceed with different lectures on Republic. So its basic theme is justice and the benefits that accrue from being just. So the basic theme around which the entire Republic revolves or the dialogue of Republic revolves is what is justice when we can say justice prevails in the state and uh, what are the benefits that accrues to a person who is a just person. So in this book both the individualistic aspect of justice as well as socialistic aspect of justice or social aspect of justice have been discussed which we will, we will be discussing subsequently in different lectures. Meno is another dialogue. It continued with the idea of teaching virtue as stated in Protagoras. So the dialogue Protagoras refers about virtue and uh, Meno is the dialogue which uh, you know continues or is a, con uh, a continuation of the dialogue of Protagoras which is about virtue. Then comes Georgias. This was written by Plato in around 380 BC. And the dialogue depicts a conversation between Socrates and a small group of sophists at a dinner gathering. And uh, the theme is the true definition of rhetoric. So Georgias is a dialogue which is about rhetoric, which is another branch of philosophy. And Plato over here passionately pleaded for the need to adhere to one's conscience, means one should act according to one's conscience. You know, later on, uh, this has been taken up by Rousseau when he has described about uh, human nature. Maybe when we come to Rousseau, we will refer to it. How he has given a place of primacy to conscience over reason. And that is why he was declared as anti-rational. And uh, he faced a lot of protest for that. He dismissed the idea that the art was a matter of expediency. So these are the themes of uh, the dialogue called Georgias. Menexenus. This is a critique of the Periclean Golden Age. Now, <coughs> Pericles, I think earlier also I have discussed about that uh, he was uh, a Greek politician and a general during the Golden Age of Athens. And his time period is 495 to 429 BC and he was quite influential between the greco persian wars and the Peloponnesian war. And uh, Thucydides, another historian of the era, has acclaimed him as the first citizen of Athens. He ruled from 
461 to 429 BC which is referred to as age of Pericles in the ancient Greek history and uh, Pericles achieved authority in 461 BC through political elimination of Simon and uh, Simon was accused by Pericles of uh, betraying his city by aiding Sparta. So uh, this is the theme basically um, this dialogue called Menexenus talks about the age of Pericles. Then Phaedo is another dialogue which belongs to one of those four dialogues which were written during the captivity of uh, Socrates and it is also known as uh, known to ancient readers as on the soul and it presents a rational case for the immortality of the soul this is the dialogue where uh, Plato argues with Phaedo that uh, maybe if I am executed I will die but what is important is that the soul would be immoral and one can imagine how right Socrates was in his assertion that uh, we are reading him even after 2500 years. It is set in the last hours prior to the death of Socrates and is Plato's fourth and last dialogue to detail, to detail the Socrates final days uh, uh, as we learned in the earlier slides. Euthyphro, Apology and Crito. Then comes Symposium. This is another dialogue. This dialogue explained the concept of love or eros, the possibility of transcending a desire for material objects and developing a passion for beauty in its super sensuous form. And it also explored the nature of forms as objects of mystic contemplation by the immortal soul. So this is uh, the true philosophy of uh, Plato which talks about matter versus forms or you can say idea versus matter. Maybe a glimpses of it uh, I may provide when I come to this theory which has also been enunciated in and discussed in uh, Plato's Republic. Then statesman another important dialogue after uh, Republic and the Greek name Politicus it defends the superiority of the rule of law as opposed to personal dictatorship. Where a sovereign law existed, limited monarchy was better than democracy. But in its absence, sovereign democracy was better than an irresponsible autocratic rule of, autocratic rule of one or a few. So here Plato has defined a statesman as one who was entitled to rule without laws and the consent of his subjects for he knew what was best for them similar to the idea in the Republic. So basically in the statesman once again you can say Plato has argued for or has given primacy to rule of men over rule of law. Okay, so this uh, is a dialogue which is somewhat similar to the rule of philosopher king that uh, Plato has uh, built, has talked about, has discussed at quite some length and which is the basis of his ideal state. He has argued on the same line in this dialogue in the statesman which means here he has discussed about the or he has contrasted between the rule of law and rule of uh, men or rule of a person who, who is a statesman he would rely more on his wisdom, his vision than on the instrumentality of law. So what it means is that the rule of law and the consent of the people or the subjects have been relegated to secondary place and he has given a place of primacy to rule of men or man in this dialogue called statesman. The laws, which is the last dialogue of Plato, this is the longest of all the dialogues of Plato. This is another thing that you should keep in mind, one student should keep in mind. And it consists of 12 books and Republic consists of 10 books. 
and it begins with the question who is given the credit for establishing a civilizations law laws contents on the ethics of government and law and have established have esta government and law have established it as a classic of political philosophy which means uh, what should be the ethics of government and uh, what should be the ethics behind rule of law it regarded a mixed constitution as the best for it moderated between the two extremes despotism and freedom this phase of plato was similar to that of aristotle this is only undisputed dialogue of plato which do not feature socrates so uh, remember this is the only dialogue in which socrates is not a chief spokesman otherwise in most dialogues socrates is the chief chief spokesman this the laws you can say provides you or provides the readers plato's second best state and in this dialogue plato has reinstated the rule of law which are the rule of person or rule of enlightened person or rule of philosophy so in republic he, he has built a case for his ideal state in favor of rule of philosophy where what he means to say is that, that if there is a rule of wise man then even the best of law, laws would be superfluous and if uh, in a political system there is rule of law and uh, even if the best of laws are there those laws would be fruitless if men are not good so basically what it means is that in the laws he has argued for rule of law and uh, you know he accepts somewhere that uh, i still champion i mean plato says i still champion the ideal state and the principles of ideal state that i have built in republic and i think that is the best and uh, i have given a place of primacy to the rule of law as a concession to human frailty because human nature is such that uh, it is very difficult to realize in reality whatever i have advocated in plato so since that cannot be realized and uh, this is what most of my men have been arguing i am reinstating the rule of law in this dialogue the laws and another important thing that one should keep in mind is that uh, as you know the last line says it was uh, the this this phase of plato was similar to that of aristotle which means uh, aristotle was very much present in academy during these days when laws were produced or the this dialogue was produced and uh, whatever are there in the laws you will find most of it has been borrowed by uh, aristotle when he talks about his uh, polity or the second best state or the best practicable state so the laws of plato is something that one can realize on ground and uh, plato has become more realist a, a pragmatist rather whereas in republic he is thoroughly idealist so a student of political science should at least go through these three dialogues the laws the statesman and the republic and should uh, learn the contrast of uh, contrast between the thinking of plato in the republic and the laws timaeus is another dialogue it examined the origin of life in the imaginary content continent of atlantis and here god was seen as an intelligent and effective force providing order in the world so this is a dialogue which largely deals, deals with the metaphysical world you can say so philebus is another dialogue which ethic which focuses on ethics and good life so this is about uh, plato's this the these slides through these slides i have tried to discuss about plato's works and i have highlighted i have tried to highlight 
most of the important works and the contents of those works the themes of those works around which uh, plato has built those dialogues and many questions could arise from uh, the slides that i have uh, shared over here and um, the the things that i have mentioned in the slides may lead to several multiple choice questions so maybe in one of my lecture i will discuss about the questions which have appeared related to plato and plato's works and plato's political philosophy and uh, i will be discussing plato's political philosophy in my next lecture thank you thanks a lot